Thank you very much, comrades, comrades and friends. I'm very happy to be here with you today in your Congress. I hope the best for your decisions. We are only a few days away from the most critical European election in the history of the European Union. Because this time, we are not voting only to elect members for the European Parliament. We are voting in order to shape the balance of political forces in a Europe which is at a critical crossroad. We are voting to hold back catastrophic austerity and we are voting to regain democracy so that we are voting for our lives. We are voting to tear down the wall of money. We are voting to overcome the North-South division, a division that cancels the European idea and Europe itself. So, the dilemma is now very clear. Either with the Europe of the peoples or with the Europe of the bankers. Either with democracy and solidarity that unites or with austerity that kills Europe. And at the end, either with the European left or with Mrs. Merkel. This is the dilemma. And the answer is only one. The answer is that all together, let's march ahead with the European left, with the link and Syriza once again with the left. <laughs> Dear comrades and friends, I, I bring to you the message of hope and change that I receive from every corner of Europe. The optimism and the anticipation of the ordinary citizen of Europe on the street. That the left will be the pleasant surprise in the next European elections. We can, we must, and we will be. Because now is the hour of the left. Now is the hour of democracy. Now is the time of the change. The other Europe is not only our motto. It's the demand of every citizen in Europe, wherever he or she may reside, in north or south, east or west. So I want to bring you the hope of every citizen whose patience is over, who cannot withstand austerity anymore, who cannot tolerate fear anymore, who are ready to vote for dignity and hope at the European elections. In the four corners of Europe, citizens are, optimist that, are optimistic that at the polls we will break through the wall of austerity built by its three musketeers. The, <laughs> the conservatives, the liberals, and the Social Democrats. Because in a few days, because in a few days we are not voting on the, do on the dosage of austerity. We are voting for its immediate termination. We are voting for a policy change, for democracy, justice, and growth. That's why we are voting for left. And I'm optimistic, I'm optimistic that we will break through, will break through the neoliberal consensus of the three. The European left will be 
the third political force in the next European Parliament and we, and we will play a leading role in the European development. It's becoming clear with every day that goes by that we will leave the past behind Mr. Juncker, who has presided over all the Europe all the Eurogroup meetings for the Memoranda and Austerity, and who has great political responsibility for the failure of the austerity programs. But also for Mr. Schulz, who assumed the presidency of the European Parliament in half term after a political deal between the Conservatives and the Social Democrats. And in the critical periods of the crisis, he has shown no difference in essence, from his right-wing protestator. And the determined duo, the Giffer Hostad, the determined duo, as Graham Watson characterized the liberals Giffer Hostad and Tolly Wren, the symbol of harsh austerity in Europe. Mr. Olly Wren, whom the liberals are hiding behind Mr. Verhofstadt, in order to deceive people ahead of the elections. That's why every vote in favor of Juncker, that's why every vote in favor of Schulz, that's why every vote in favor of Verhofstadt is a willing yes to the continuation of austerity. And that's why Every vote that is lost by abstaining for any respectable reason is also an unexpected yes to austerity. Those who are critical to the current Europe, from a progressive angle, they should be the first ones to go to the polls. They should be the first ones to vote down the political forces that have contributed to the current neoliberal and undemocratic Europe of freer and memoranda. Those in Europe who want policy change and a change in course, they should vote the list of the European left. But above all, the first ones to go to the polls should be those who are the first victims of this crisis. The young and women. From unemployed, they should become the pioneers of change in Europe. <clears throat> Dear comrades and friends, May 2014 offers an once in a generation opportunity to reshape Europe for the better. We must seize it all the more since, for the first time, the peoples of Europe themselves have set the political agenda of these elections, no to austerity, yes to growth. That's why, that's why even the most consistent political supporters of austerity are critical of it just ahead of the elections. But this opportunity should not be missed. Now we can and we must turn Europe left. Because those who are now denouncing right-wing Euroscepticism, nationalism, and neo-Nazism are the same who fueled with the choice of the barbarous austerity measures. And we, the European left, we are the only counterweight to the nightmare of the far right and to the reappearance of the ghost of fascism in Europe. And, uh, and it's absolutely unacceptable that right at the heart of Europe we have governments who have governments right at the heart of Europe with the participation of neo-Nazis elements 
as happens in Ukraine. Europe, Europe should demand the immediate withdrawal of all fascist elements from all levels of government as a precondition for peace to be restored. Comrades and friends, let me say it once again. The neoliberal European establishment, Mrs. Merkel and her political allies, have taken advantage of the crisis in order to write Europe's post-war, to rewrite Europe's post-war political economy, and to impose the Anglo-Saxon neoliberal capitalism, and they did that with myths and populism. First, they said that Greeks were supposedly lazy, and for that reason, they went bankrupt. But when the crisis began to spread, they did not dare to repeat it. They also said, they also said that it was the money of the taxpayers of the North that saved Greece. Once again, they did not tell the truth to the people. Because with your money, they saved the overexposed to Greek bonds, European banks. That's why the Greek debt, that's why the Greek debt was not restructured, restructured at, the, at the outset, at the beginning. That is with your own money you save the European banks and the neoliberal governments in Europe. And then, out of the loans given to Greece, only 1.6% went to the country's government budget, namely 5.3 million Euro, billion euros. The rest goes out from one pocket and only after the self-destructive preconditions of the memorandum have been fulfilled, the money goes back in the same pocket because it deposited immediately to a special account only for the repayment of past loans. This is the reality. And for this to happen successfully, Greece sinked into a recession for the seventh, for the seventh consecutive years. Because unlike the forecasts of the accomplices who pretend that Greece is a success story, the OECD forecasts recession this year for Greece at the rate of 0.3%. And timid growth after 2015, and that only conditional. This is the growth which the Troika had assured that it would appear as early as 2012. Now that's postponed for until 2015, and we shall see. And so, one reasonable wonders, the average German citizen, the average Dutch citizen, the Finn and others, Will they tolerate in their countries, in your countries, an official unemployment close to 30%? An unprecedented for a European country in peacetime humanitarian crisis. Would you tolerate children in schools fending from hunger, small businessmen committing suicide because of debts and closures? Retired people who cannot afford to buy their medicine. Show me the European country whose citizens will tolerate such living conditions. And tell me, would you describe that as a success story? As it described by the advocates of austerity by Mrs. Merkel, by Mr. Samoras, the Greek Prime Minister, and his assistant, Mr. Venizelos, Mr. Junger, and Mr. Mr. Verhofstadt, and of course, don't forget Oli Rehn. 
So it is the, this is, would you describe this, what happened in Greece as a success story? Or would you, would you describe it as a modern Greek tragedy? The must and immediately and it will end immediately because because I assure you that Syriza will win a great victory in the May elections a victory that would mean the end of the conservative Samaras government and the beginning of the end of austerity in the entire Europe The beloved to Mrs. Merkel Savaraz government will soon prove to be a, mani a minority among the people. And uh, I regret that I will say it here in Berlin. But, uh, uh, and Mrs. Merkel, who will listen to it, maybe she will be upset. <laughs> but soon, very soon, she will have to deal with a government of the left in Greece. A government that I promise to you will negotiate with her on your behalf as well. Because our differences, our differences with Mrs. Merkel do not have a national sign. They instead have a political, social and class sign and the end of the, of the strategy of austerity in the South will be the most optimistic message for the working people in the North of Europe. Because this message will be that the devaluation of their labor will end, that their rights will be protected. So it's our common fight to stop austerity in Europe and to regain democracy in our countries. <clears throat> Comrades and friends, uh, I want you to be fully conscious of it and convey that this message to the German people. Everything that took place in Greece, everything that took place in the European South Periphery with the barbarian austerity measures, it did not happen in order to tackle the debt crisis. The proof is that in Greece before the memorandum, the public debt was about 124% of GDP. And after the memorandum, after four consecutive years of memorandum, the public debt in Greece is 175% of GDP. Now that the pro productive base, at the same time, the productive base of the country is in ruins, the unemployment is as high as never before, and Greece is on the verge of a humanitarian, unprecedented humanitarian crisis. Despite massive austerity, Greece's public debt is still unsustainable because debt sustainability has never been a policy goal of the leadership of the European Union. This is the truth. The policy goals have been austerity per se, privatizations, and neoliberal reforms. But the Greek public debt will not become sustainable without bold initiatives. Bold initiatives like the proposal of a cancellation of a large part of its nominal value, similar to the solution of 1953 for Germany in the London summit, which has been a landmark in European solidarity. But if it is not, if Greek debt is not sustainable, then it will be 
a real burden and a threat, not only to Greece, but to the entire Eurozone. Those who think that the indebtedness of Greece and the pending debt sustainability is a negotiating weapon, they should know that they are holding a boomerang instead of a revolver. Dear comrades and friends, I know that once again, this period, we are all looking at Greece. But this time, you turn your eyes upon us with optimism. It was from Greece that the vicious and black circle of austerity and social despair started. It will be from Greece that the new circle of change, we are sure that will start very, very soon. But I want, I want you to know, I want you to know that we, as Syriza, we are particularly looking forward to the German people and to the sister, our sister party of Die Linke. We are looking forward to your solidarity. We are looking forward to your support. And at this point, I would like to thank you on behalf of the Greek people and on behalf of Syriza. I'd like to thank you for the sincere support of the Linke on a European moral and political issue still pending, that issue of the German war reparations. And in particular, of the forced occupation loan from the Bank of Greece at that time, a loan with which Nazis financed its warfare. That's why it is not a bilateral Greek and German dispute. It is a European issue which is pending, which is pending and must come to an end, and its resolution will be a moral vindication not only for the Greek people, but for all peoples in Europe, for all peoples that fight against Nazis in this crucial for European people's period. And dear comrades, we have the ability. We can, we can, and we should. Syriza, Die Linke, and the party of the European left we could become ambassadors of a new unity between Greeks and Germans among all the peoples of Europe. In a few days, dear comrades and friends left, in a few days left until elections for the Europe of tomorrow, we are fighting all together for each and every single vote. So that especially those who are reluctant or have political objections go and vote. We fight the battle everywhere to make the European left a force that can decisively influence the everyday life of the average citizen in Europe, a force of hope and prospect. In that battle, I'm trying to contribute with all my strength as the candidate, not only for Syriza, not only for the European South, but as a candidate also for the Linke, a candidate for the presidency, for, for, for to be a president of the commission, to be your choice is a honor for me to be your choice is a honor for the Greek people who are suffering from austerity. And for all peoples of the South, as well as across the entire Europe, who are against austerity. So that's why I used to say that I'm not a candidate for the South of Europe. My candidacy is a candidacy for all European peoples. Even they live in the South, or they live in the north of Europe. That's why the candidacy of the European left 
unites that neoliberalism divides. It unites the citizens of Europe in a political project for the foundation of Europe on a democratic, social, and ecological base. <laughs> Dear comrades and friends, I'm sure that this May will be our May, will be for Europe, will be for the young, will be for the women, for the unemployed, for people of labor and culture. This May is ours. We will be the pleasant surprise of this election. We are holding our faith in our vote. We are holding our life in our hands. And I am sure that we will overcome. I am sure for the Linke that the Linke will increase its forces. And I'm very optimist that you will elect more deputies in the next European Parliament. And I'm sure that you will elect also Sofia that has roots from Greece. I'm sure for that, and more than Sofia. I'm very optimist that you will be, you will be the pleasant surprise in the next elections in Germany and left will be the positive surprise in the European election. I believe that uh, we will overcome, we will succeed in our struggle. Venceremos. Hasta la victoria siempre. Thank you very much. We are giving a common fight. We have common goals. And we will still overcome. We will overcome. Thank you very much. Ja, liebe, liebe Freunde, liebe Genossen, damit ihr auch wisst, was wir jetzt Alexis mit auf den Weg gegeben haben. Das ist die Geburtstagstorte für die Europäische Linkspartei. Ihr wisst, gestern ist der zehnte Jahrestag der Gründung gewesen. In Rom hat eine Feierveranstaltung stattgefunden. Wir haben hier gekämpft. Alexis ist jetzt hier. Und ich denke, das ist unser symbolisches Geschenk für unsere gemeinsame Europäische Linke und natürlich mit Blick auf ein tolles Wahlergebnis am 25. Mai. Triunfera, e vivo 
socialismo e la libertà. Die richtige Geburtstagsparty findet am 25. Mai abends statt. Wer jetzt schon ein bisschen vorfeiern möchte, es gibt auch kleinere Kuchenstücke und ein Stück von dieser Torte dann am Rande. So, this, where is the night? So, in, the, in our first 10 years we did much. In the next 10 years we will do more. It was enough just to be before the government in Greece, but after 10 years we will have the governments in all European countries in order to create a new society of justice, growth and solidarity. Den Rest noch mal an der Seite. <lacht> <lacht>